For as long as I can remember, visiting the Greek island of Hydra had been one of the tasks that sat atop my bucket list. And so, when I was in Athens last month, amidst the souvlaki and sculptures with no heads, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to spend the hour and a half on a ferry to visit there. But aside from the fact that the island had banned cars, apart from ambulances and bin lorries, there seems, at a glance, very little that sets apart Hydra from the other whitewashed, sunlit Greek islands. But it was the culture of the island in the 1950s and 1960s, one of writing, music and poetry, that had enthralled me since I found out about it. At the time, the most prominent of the artists on the island were Australian husband and wife duo George Johnson and Charmian Clift, both writers. But amidst the blossoming of art on Hydra, a young poet from Montreal named Leonard Cohen emerged as one of the greatest songwriters of all time. This short video isn't like most of mine. It's not about Leonard Cohen's music or his time on Hydra, nor any of the other artists, but it's a small story about how places can feel magical, and the feeling of inspiration when one's lofty expectations are met. I've always had oddly specific obsessions. The earliest I can recall is my favourite book in year two, that's first grade for Americans, being the diaries of Captain Robert Scott, and knowing every detail of the explorer's race to the South Pole against Roald Amundsen. But Hydra in the 50s and 60s has been on the more persistent end of these obsessions. I've watched and read everything I can about the island. Nick Broomfield's 2019 documentary Marianne and Leonard, Words of Love about the island, captures a kind of golden beauty that only a documentarian of his standing could. Polly Sampson's 2020 novel, A Theatre for Dreamers, takes you to the island through the eyes of a fictional young protagonist, saturating the reader with some of the best prose of the decade. And Charmian Clift's own memoirs of the island provide the closest thing to a foundational text of those places at that time. Part of me worried that the island, which nowadays is not populated with loads of little Leonard Cohens, would seem hollow or forlorn, a shell of what it once was. So I wasn't jumping with giddiness on the ferry, and having to change boats for an unexpected mechanical issue, coupled with an email telling me that my return ferry was cancelled, meant that it was more of a travel nightmare than an exciting trip. But when I arrived, any apprehension simply evaporated, for I went straight off into the winding, cobbled streets of Hydra. It was late September by the time I went, so tourist season was beginning to wind down, but the weather was still perfect. The main port was still bustling with Americans and Europeans, but as soon as I entered the cobweb of meandering streets, most signs of people disappeared. My walk took me through romantic little plazas, sitting with sleeping cats, and under these telephone wires. These two photos of the wires that I took do, I admit, look like the work of someone with no photographic ability trying to seem artsy, but that's not why I took them. These telephone poles and wires, erected in the 1960s, served as a reminder to Leonard Cohen of the modern world, and that he couldn't escape his European seclusion forever. They're the wires that inspired Bird on the Wire. The Raloi Cafe, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, was the place where I specifically selected to have lunch, and it's now a fairly westernised restaurant on the seafront with a menu in English, but it also served as the hub of the cultural expat world on Hydra in the 50s and 60s, and also as the site of Leonard Cohen's first ever concert. After lunch, I climbed up the hilly stone streets again to see Leonard Cohen's own house, sat on a street now named after him. He owned and used it until his death in 2016, and it remains a private residence, but it really did take me back there, and make me feel inspired in all the ways that I'd hoped, in my own songwriting and writing generally, and just in life really. Apart from a brief conversation with two English women, fellow fans of Leonard Cohen, I was listening to the song One of Us Cannot Be Wrong, the final track from Leonard Cohen's first album, and one of his greatest songs. Would you stand there so nice in your blizzard of ice, oh please let me come into the storm. After walking along the waterfront and making friends with some donkeys, I made my final stop on the journey to the house of Charmian Clift and George Johnston. It remains a private residence, and you'd never peg it as special if you didn't know what it was already. The kitchen in the house, as seen here in a video by the author Polly Sampson, was the spiritual home for the matriarch of the expat community, Charmian Clift. The ghosts of the island's past certainly haunt the island, but they don't torment it, instead they pleasantly linger. And it's easy to see how such a place was conducive to such creativity, and equally easy to imagine it happening again. It's tempting to view Hydra as a tragedy. Marianne and Leonard never did end up together in the long run. Her son Axel has his own problems. Charmian Clift committed suicide in anticipation of the publication of George Johnston's novel Clean Straw for Nothing, and he himself would die of tuberculosis a year later. But nothing gold can last forever, and in the time that it had, the bohemian paradise on Hydra remains, to me, something beautiful. And from the ashes of the community, once its time had passed, 
rose one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. Perhaps it's unfashionable to describe something like this with such gushing praise, devoid of any cynicism or deconstruction, but it really did feel like a magical place to me. And I hope that this video, as well as giving a little bit of information about Leonard Cohen and the community on Hedra in the 50s and 60s, serves to inspire you to visit a place that seems magical to you, and enjoy it as much as I enjoyed Hedra. Thanks very much for watching. I know this video is a little different for this channel, but I'm thinking about making more of these smaller videos in between the bigger ones, like my last video about language, since it would allow me to keep uploading whilst making my bigger videos better researched and more in depth, like what I'm working on now about architecture. You can let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, or best of all leave a comment since I always love hearing what you have to say, and I'll hopefully see you all next time.